Welcome back. It's been a long time. Uh, today I was uh, reading through the comment section in my previous videos and I thought that maybe I should be sharing more content with you guys, especially uh, talking about how uh, certain things that you guys have problems with can be covered. A lot of you wanted to know what are the job opportunities in Sweden, especially when you're studying. And I'm only going to target uh, the people who are studying for this question. Uh, we can talk about the context of this question in a completely different way in some other video. But for today, I want to answer the question, which is whether or not students who come here to study can actually work at the same time. And if so, what are the opportunities? How much are you get, going to get paid? And is it scalable or not? And is it sufficient or not? I've made a few very important pointers regarding how we will approach this uh, problem. First of all, whether or not can you can study and work at the same time. Is it a myth or not? No, you can. Everything is possible here. Everything is possible once you just take make the decision that you want to do it. But I put my trust on you guys as in if you come here to study your number one priority should be studies and you should always make sure that that is above everything because you've come here for a reason and that reason is study so study is number one priority crazy russian hacker <laughs> anyways now that i said that as i said that this 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 uh, video will completely target the people who are coming here to study and especially the ones who are coming here to do masters from some other country there are many ways in which you can earn money you can either work in your own field uh, professionally you can work part-time in your own field you can do internships you can do paid thesis work or you can also work in different restaurants, pubs, etc. So these are the few things and, I'll not, and now I'll break down each and every one of them. So firstly, I talked about part-time. Now, what do I mean by part-time? In Sweden, companies, especially startup companies, really like to hire students who can work part-time because they know that you guys are studying and that's your number one priority. But at the end of the day, they, of course, have a limited budget because they're a startup company and they also want talented individuals like you. So they, there you have one opportunity where you apply in a normal way. You go through their websites. Uh, the best approach would be continuously look through LinkedIn. I'll make a different video on LinkedIn because it's very important and why you should, you should always use LinkedIn. So after this video most probably I'll, I'll target that oops <laughs> most probably i'll target that but what you need to do is go through company websites uh, see whether or not they are uh, taking in part-time uh, part-time opportunities and apply now what happens if, if you work part-time the thing is you don't work full-time <laughs> yeah no brainer right but at the same time, you have the flexibility to choose a good schedule. So you study uh, in, a, in a certain number of days. Apart from a few days, you can fit that into your work schedule. So you can balance out maybe two days you work. Uh, if you, you spend about six hours a day and the rest of the days you just study. You go to university, you do your homework, you do your assignment, you do your group projects. And at the end of the month, you have something substantial to cover your month in terms of money. So, as I said, the, the schedule is always flexible. How much 
pressure would you be in if you do that? If you schedule your things well, so if you study, if your study schedule is set in a good way, and you and if you know that whatever whatever you are going to do in the uh, in the company where you work part time is feasible and doable uh, for you, it's not going to be a big problem because once again. It's a part-time opportunity, not a full-time, so you are not supposed to spend all your effort, strength, time, sweat on one specific problem which is substantially big, which is not the case because you try to incrementally solve problems in the company, trying to build up something in a good and a better way. So yes, as I said, you can work part-time. Now, what about internship? As I said, that you can even work as interns. Now, for me, this is a very good opportunity to earn a lot of money and at the same time gain a lot of experience. So every year, students get a summer break. And what is a summer break, right? In summer break, mostly companies usually do not work. So the employees in the companies don't work. They either take holidays, they take leaves, or the productivity is a bit lower than any normal day. So usually, uh, approximately two months, this is always the case, especially in Sweden. So every year, two months, you can get a summer internship uh, in any company that you want, because that's the time where big big companies small companies big companies actually all the big every company that you can imagine uh, releases circular for hiring summer interns now what is a summer intern you go into the company first you get selected right and then you go in you try to learn how their processes is and what do they do if you uh, if your domain matches with their domain then you solve small scale problems it's nothing uh, very big that you cannot handle because they know that it's only for two months it's for short time and you might not be getting a lot of help from a lot of employees because most of them will be on leave so the problems that you will solve there will be very small scale but nevertheless number one it's good for your experience you gain a lot of experience and you earn a lot of money the third point is you can do your thesis now to, to qualify for a master's degree you need to either do a thesis which is worth 30 credits or 60 credits so 30 credits thesis is usually six months and 60 credit thesis is usually one year now if you do the thesis in a company for example then there is a high possibility that at the end of the thesis you will get paid now i'm not talking about how much money you will earn in the in all the way that I spoke about but I'll talk about that later so what happens in the thesis you have an academic part and you have an industrial part if you do it in a company so you try to solve an industrial problem by using the knowledge that you gained from academics and at the end of the day you uh, try to solve something while also contributing to science in one way or the other so that's the plan and this is a whole new topic in itself but as i said that if you do thesis in a company if you get selected for that you will eventually get paid so these are some of the ways in which you can uh, work and uh, also study especially the second and third option which is uh, doing summer intern and doing a thesis is so much compatible with your studies because while you are doing summer internships you don't have to worry about your studies because it's it's a holiday your university will be closed and you don't have to worry about it while you are doing your thesis in the company you are actually studying and you are doing your thesis and you are also working and you are also getting paid so it all goes hand in hand the first option that I said that you do a part-time job in some company or some startup company, that is something where you need to balance. 
You need to balance your study life. You need to balance your work life. <sighs> now let's move on to something a little different. What if I want to work in a restaurant, for example? In Sweden, restaurant business is booming everywhere. And many students, believe me, many students starting from school, starting from bachelor's, uh, even master's level students, they all work part-time in either restaurants, pubs, bars, cafes, etc. You name it. And it's a very well-reputed job here. So people who want to maybe study and work a few days maybe in the weekends for example you can uh, work in, in a restaurant now i know that how i, I know that uh, getting a job in a company for example has a process so you go through a uh, recruitment process by first giving in your cv and then you get a uh, call for an interview you get accepted it's the same process in restaurants as well these are also big companies here uh, so you go through the same process you can either uh, go to a restaurant ask the manager that hey i uh, want to maybe work uh, two days a week maybe in the weekends uh, is there an opportunity for me i can work in maybe in this section or that section uh, and based on that you might just get a call don't be surprised because pe people are needed everywhere um, i for example have more or less done all of the things that i said believe me or not i've worked uh, in uh, in as an intern as a summer intern in an, in an automotive company here in sweden um, i've worked at another big automotive company in uh, sweden while i was doing my thesis uh, i've also worked in uh, restaurants uh, and uh, all, uh, all those places because it's a, it's a field of opportunity right you create your opportunity you take it and you run with it now as i said about restaurants it's also it sometimes it's very flexible you can go go there talk to the manager uh, take take your uh, uh, shifts in uh, either weekends or even you can take shifts in week days when you are finished with your studies you can go there work for a few hours come back home do your studies go to bed and repeat the process again but i would advise you always to make sure that whatever you do you don't mess up your studies okay now when it comes to pay scale if you work in restaurants you are more likely to be get paid by hour and uh, depends on how much hour you work so the hourly salary usually ra ranges from 130 to 150 swedish crowns per hour and uh, that can go either high or low depending on your age uh, and talking about the restaurants here and something similar you will find in uh, when you do your internships or when you work part-time so your hourly salary will either bounce between 140 to 150 swedish crowns per hour uh, if you are if you are in the preliminary experience stage uh, so so yeah i mean there are opportunities there are ways in which you can earn and uh, these are some of the ways in which you as a student can Take care of studies and at the same time work and earn some money. Now, now one other question is, is this enough for me to go buy every month? More than enough. Trust me, more than enough. If you work in a startup company as, an, uh, as a part-timer, if you work for two to three days, I think you will be able to make a substantial amount of money which will cover both your rent, your living expense, and your uh, food expense i've made a video on that specifically uh, which i'll also link in the description and if you work in restaurants it also is a similar thing you get a lot of money you can save that money and do whatever you want uh, what about what about uh, internships summer internships same uh, same process here you 
get hourly paid you save up that money and you can use it uh, for your for your, uh, even for your uh, semester fee so you can add in a lot of money and then uh, pay your semester fee along with any other source of income that you have uh, sometimes there's a big combo that people do some people in summer work in uh, summer internships in companies and usually when they're done with that they work in restaurants uh, either working in the kitchen or working in the bar or something like that so they're making a lot of money in those two months uh, and believe me that whatever that i've said here i've done all of it and uh, and i've made sure that i did not mess up my studies while i do it so i did it responsibly so i urge you guys to do whatever that i said responsibly no messing up your studies that's your primary goal so don't forget that if you like this video like it if you feel that you are getting a lot of information out from me subscribe to my channel i'll be uploading more videos on similar topics uh, next topic if you have any problem about my video specifically here's something that i didn't cover just comment out i'll like um, gladly make a video out of it and uh, next time i'll be basically talking about how to actually go and apply for these jobs especially the ones that i talked about like internships uh, part-time part-time uh, employment in a company and getting your thesis work so how do you apply for it how much of an influence linkedin is and how well you should make your cv in order to get the most positive responses that you want to get so this video is about to end uh, hopefully I was able to solve some of your questions any other question comment peace out signing off